Welcome back to the Find Your Leadership Confidence podcast or summit. <laughs> I'll do that again, I'm sure. This is Vicki Nestling coming to you from Roswell, Georgia. And I have another awesome guest today. Uh, Terry Weidelman is my guest. And I think Terry was really one of my first guests that I had as a podcast host. So I am so thrilled to have her back on my first ever summit. Let me tell you a little bit about Terry. So Terry is a shiftologist and business mindset and leadership navigator at Intuitive Leadership University. So sorry, Intuitive Leadership University, where she mentors entrepreneurs to evolve into positively unstoppable, intuitive entrepreneurial leaders. After quickly discovering and clearing her clients' success blocks, she guides them to trust in their intuition, experience positive relationships, improve resilience, and implement business systems to increase sales and profits. Terry is a certified co-active and executive coach, behavior analyst, licensed heart math coach, certified emotion and body code pr practitioner, NLP practitioner, law of attraction trainer, and Reiki master. She was the owner and CEO of a manufacturing company, image consultant company, and holistic education and leadership center. Please welcome the very talented Miss Terry Wildeman. Hello, my dear. You're looking lovely tonight. Thank you. As do you after such a long day, dear Vicki. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I just realized I'm supposed to have a podcast later tonight, so I might have to cancel that. <laughs> You're in podcast mode. <laughs> <laughs> so, Terry, tell everybody where you're calling in from and a little bit about your why. Why did you leave what you those other three businesses to do what you do today? Okay, well, I'm from Newport, Rhode Island. That's where we're living right now. Uh, we've been here 24 years. The U.S. Navy brought us here, and mm -hmm. it is app has been absolutely amazing. It's a great place to raise a family. Now, all those other things happened before the age of 31. I um, uh, I got married to the Navy. <laughs> and, uh, we were stationed in various places. And when we moved up here, I certain things that happened in my life that were highly, that were very intense. I had experienced mm -hmm. multiple burnouts. And I realized that something had to change. Mm -hmm. I was on the go, 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 have to, have to, have to, need to, need to, need to, hamster wheel of life. And I've been in business since I was 18 years old. So when we first moved here, uh, it was, I m went to a course that really changed my life. Wow. And uh, I was studying past life regression for two years. Uh, I met my husband when we were down in Valparaiso, Chile. I met the ship down there and I'm walking through the streets of Valparaiso, uh, a city that I had never heard of before, by the way, at that time. I was like, what's the name of that city? <laughs> and I'm walking through the city and I'm like, oh my gosh, I've been here before. How could I have been there before? Yeah. So when I went home and um, when, I went up, when I went to pick up my two-year-old, who is now 31, and my two-year-old, uh, the neighbor next door to my parents' house, who was in, in Miami, ran. Uh, she said, "She said, I'll be right back after I told her I felt like I'd been there before. Handed me the book, Many Lives, Many Masters by Dr. Brian Weiss. Mm -hmm. And it validated everything that I knew to be true. Wow. And, uh, of course, my very Catholic mother thought I was a heretic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was like, wow. Ah! And that was really the beginning of my getting into the holistic realm wow. and again when i got up here to newport uh somebody was teaching a course on many lives many masters a week after i got here oh my goodness that exactly exactly <laughs> everything started happening very very fast and then i became a reiki master in 1998 and with my first attunement my divine gifts just exploded 
And um, then I got certified in NLP, EFT, emotion code, body code, body talk, you name it. I, I've been involved in all of that. And when mm. I now, because I did burn out, and, and this is yeah. my why, I knew that my burnout and the multiple times I burned out and my health was in the toilet, basically. Yeah. And it was because of this entrepreneurial energy that I had that I wasn't the only one. Mm -hmm. There were so many entrepreneurs that were doing yeah. the same thing. And it was important for me to work with entrepreneurs and teach them how to integrate the practical, tactical, and logical with the emotional, the energetic, the spiritual, and the intuitive. My goodness. So it was like a calling. Yeah, it re really was. Mm. And, um, I used to teach that it's the practical, the personal, and the spiritual. Mm -hmm. And I have learned that when you do that, your life gets hard. It's yeah. about flipping it. It's the spiritual first, then the personal, and then the practical sides of business. You mm. can't build a house solely on the practical. Yeah. It has no, no. yeah, I was just going to say, yeah, it, it doesn't, it doesn't, um, enrich you, I guess. Exactly. Exactly. So I, I mentioned in the bio about shiftology and I know when we first met, I asked this question, but I'm going to ask it again for those that may not know what is shiftology. Shiftology is the art and science of intentional, intuitive and impactful change. And it's something that's very near and dear to my heart. I bought the dot com in 2010. And it's something I, I just love working with my shiftology toolkit mm -hmm. to assist entrepreneurial leaders to bob weave and shift in the moment to help that I have all these different tools and practices and things that that I work with to assist them to be their absolute best and to clear out the emotional self-sabotage that gets mm. in the way of success. And, and it is true as a entrepreneur, a small business owner, whatnot, you do have to shift a at, lot and, at a moment, <laughs> at a moment, you know, the world changes and you got to keep up really. Um, well, just, just even daily. Um, yeah. I know today was one of those days where I had, this is my third event today. Yeah, I know. <laughs> We're so lucky you guys that we got her here. It was like, wow. Okay. We can do this. I'm Bob weaving and shifting. And it has been nonstop since seven o'clock this morning. And certain things have happened. That's like, ah, you know, it, it, it's, and everything that has happened that someone and Terry, 30 years ago would have thought, oh, this isn't good. Today <laughs> it's like, woo, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> and and then you, you have to have that attitude though. It's so easy to go right to the negative. Yes. But well, we're wired for that. Vicky. Yeah. You know, that. I, you know, you're preaching to, you know, both of us know that mm -hmm. we're, we're wired to go to the negative first. Yeah. And when we understand when we do that, if we have the skill set to mm -hmm. shift in the moment, to go to the positive, it's okay. it's okay if you have a negative thought. It's about not living there. Yeah. Not that's living the there. Yeah. That's the difference. You know, when people say they're in a funk, they can't get out of the funk. I think that's, you know, mm -hmm. that's partly their own choice really kind of what Timmy was talking about. You took the words out of my mouth. Timmy was talking about choice. Mm -hmm. We are at choice. And when he heard, when he said that phrase, I was like, yes, <laughs> we are yeah. at choice every moment of every day, mm -hmm. of every week, of every month, of every year. Yeah. We choose, we choose our thoughts. We have power to choose yeah. and unchoose them. Yeah. It's just being brave, having courage. I always, always talk about in leadership, you know, um, confidence comes from courage to, and being brave and, and pushing outside of your comfort zone or making those choices that are hard. Um, 
or what you need to do that that's what sets you apart it does it really does now here's what i love about the work that i do when we choose to go to that courageous place when we choose to step out of our proverbial box yeah shiftology in shiftology my toolkit I have tools to clear out the resistance. I have oh. tools to clear out all that stuff. Just before I came on, I was working with someone who was very resistant to uh, sales in a situation that they were in. In less than five minutes, I was able to clear out the resistance. She was like, how'd you do that? Magic. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to sign Magic. up. Sign up. All right, share a bit about challenges that um, are blocking us from our success. What have you seen in the years that you've been doing this? Oh, geez, what haven't I seen? Um, I know. Well, it, we, just it, give us a few. We can't have the whole Bible. Well, <laughs> well, most of it is, you know, the self-sabotage comes from, okay, I'm going to use money for an example, mm -hmm. all right? Uh, when I say the word money, where do you feel it in your body? What images come up? What words do you hear? What do you sense? And a lot of our money stuff comes from the way we were raised. Yeah. A lot of it also comes, uh, it's genetic. It, it's uh, uh, ancestral. Mm -hmm. you know, it, is, it goes from family to family to family to family. And we can clear that self-sabotaging emotion out of it's not enough. Money doesn't grow on trees. All those mantras that we hear. Mm -hmm. So where money is concerned, when we clear that out, it allows us to step into a prosperity uh, energy. Things like um, lack of self-worth, mm -hmm. lack of fear of success is a big one. Mm -hmm. um, uh, fear. Fear is constant. And fear stands for, and this is Abraham Hicks, forgetting everything is all right. <laughs> Forgetting everything is all right. I love it. And a lot of people say, well, it's, um, uh, what's the other acronym for, for fear that, that I used to use and I stopped using it when I heard this other one. Forgetting, um, forget it. It's not coming to me. So I guess I'm not meant to, to share it. So forgetting everything is all right. It's very simple to remember. Mm -hmm. And in that word fear, there's another word, ear. Yeah, here. Yeah. Everything is all right. Mm. So what our ears, what do we need to listen to? Yeah. To, so that everything is all right, because we are constantly getting signals from yeah. all directions. Mm. Uh, what are some of the other, uh, a lot of it is shame. Shame is a big emotion yeah. that comes yeah. up a lot. And People's like, oh, well, I'm embarrassed that I have that. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't think there's been one client in 10 years that, I've had that has not, shame has not popped up somewhere. Yeah. And I think that goes back to, you know, several of the different conversations we've had today where our, our upbringing, part of that, you know, the, the, the guilt that we place on our kids and our friends and our, is, is really where that shame, I think, comes up with. But what are people going to think? Yes. And that right there, you hit the nail on the head. It's none of our business what other people think. Yeah. But it's often hard when you have a parent that is so worried about what other people think. Yeah. That so, is so true. Very, very challenging. So you um, talk about emotional baggage. Ugh. Nobody has that, but we're going to talk about it anyway. <laughs> that leads to pain and physical and emotional. Um, just how it, it was bad. It's always been there. But I think these last two and a half, three years have really pushed some people to the limit. And yet, I also think the fact that some of us have slowed down to really look at that baggage and be able to recognize and remove it. So I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. Well, I do believe everything does happen for a reason. And we were forced to slow down, shut yeah. down, close ourselves sure. off for a little bit because our lives were beginning to spin out of control. Yeah. Um, so what ends up happening oftentimes is uh, 
when it comes to the emotional side of the house, mm-hmm. it's very important to realize that a lot of our emotions are subconscious emotions. Mm-hmm. So if you can imagine an iceberg, it's one of the things I use in my presentations. The iceberg, the top of the iceberg is equivalent to the neck up. Okay. okay. The bottom of the iceberg is the neck down. Yeah. Now remember this phrase, sunk the Titanic is what was unseen. Mm-hmm. So when you equate that to us and our bodies, because if we live in the very practical and ignore all this real estate below us, yeah. because our emotions are created by our organs at glance. Mm-hmm. So yeah. the thoughts are the triggers. Yeah. And when all this real estate, I can, you know, when people start to tell me what their aches and their pains are and what's going on and this mm-hmm. and that, I can read them like a roadmap as to what the emotions are that are in their way. You know, mm-hmm. so for example, eyes, what do you not want to see? Ears, what do you not want to hear? Uh, wrists, knees, ankles, or flexibility. Hips are also about flexibility. Teeth, fingers, and toes are about the details of life. Mm. On and on and on and on. So all these things, I I can begin to see what the emotions are. And with body code and emotion code, I can pretty much get pretty clear, pretty much pretty clear. (laughs) I can get clear. Yeah, there you go. (laughs) What the emotion is. Okay. And when I identify that emotion, I use a combination Mm -hmm. of emotion code body code, EFT, visualization. I've got like six or seven different tools to clear out. And I'm literally guided as to which is the best tool to clear that emotion out in that moment. Wow. It's fun. Yeah. Because if you think about it, you know, below the neck is your heart, your Mm -hmm. gut. You know, a lot of us, those two things, you know, as when I teach leadership, it's, you know, I, I want you to Think about your gut. I want you to use your heart. Exactly. And and then your head's there too. But how is that aligned with those two items? Well, I'm going to tell you how it aligns. Mm -hmm. (laughs) The head and the heart align. In leadership, especially when we're teaching stress management for leaders. Yeah. It is incredibly, incredibly important that leaders realize that there are two brains. A minimum. I'm going to say minimum of two brains in the body. We've got the brain in the head and the brain in the heart. That iceberg, we're working with the brain in the head. And that those are folks who tend to be very, very uh, task focused, Mm -hmm. very black and white, and they ignore what's going on from the neck down. The heart is is about emotions. And that heart, when we Mm -hmm. connect the brain in the head with the brain in the heart by doing a very simple technique, which is part of my freebie that I'm gonna be- Shift. Okay. When you do a quick shift and you shift your focus to the chest area and you breathe in and out of your hand is one of the steps in there. And you literally bring everything right into here. You're getting connected with your body. You are working from a space of competence, competence, and credibility that leads to coherence. Oh, nice. The brain in the head and the brain in the heart are working together. Ah. Very, very powerful. Yeah. You know, it, and it's a lot of fun because we have a, when I teach quick shift to leaders, we have a decision-making process that we do. And I had them do a mind map. Mm-hmm. In the center of the mind map, they put the problem down and there's spokes on the mind, there's spokes on the mind map. And I had them write down whatever comes to them uh, in regards to that specific situation. Mm-hmm. Then we do a quick shift. And then they write around that mind map what comes to them after we do the quick shift. Oh, wow. And it is mind blowing. Yeah, I could imagine. You see their reactions. And then the goal from there is you merge both mind maps. Oh, wow. Sounds awesome. <laughs> it is a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, sounds awesome. Well, you, um, you talked about living outside of yourself 
tell us more about that. Okay. The goal is to stop living outside of yourself. Have you ever met someone who it almost seems like they have an electrical cord outside of them and they're trying to plug into you? Okay. Yes. Some people call it an umbilical cord. I'm call, mm -hmm. I call it an electrical cord. And they're trying to just plug into you and your energy. And they're mm -hmm. searching for answers outside of themselves. The goal is to teach these leaders to spin it around and plug into themselves. Nice. Because all of the energy, all of that knowledge is inside of them. Yeah. So good. Oh, well, as you can see, we could talk for hours to Miss Terry Weidelman. She is just such a gem, and uh, you are going to want that free gift. I'm very, very excited that she's giving us that. So, again, just for uh, briefly, remind them what is in that free gift. Okay, the um, the Quick Shift Zone. It's an e guide that talks about the science and a lot about what we talked about today yeah. in uh, for stress management. The Quick Shift I use for 23 years. I use it daily. I encourage people to, and, and this is on the e-guide, I encourage people to wake up doing a, a quick shift and not get out of bed until they quick shift and step into a state of gratitude and appreciation for the pillow and the covers and the bed and the mattress and the da 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 da, -da on and on and on. And uh, make a copy of the quick shift. I actually have the four steps in there. Make a copy of it. Put it on the bathroom mirror while you're brushing your teeth. You quick shift. While you're doing your hair, you quick shift. While you're going to the closet, put a copy in there. Uh, pulling out your clothes, you quick shift. And uh, put it in the refrigerator. Put it next to your computer. Put it in the mm -hmm. car. Wherever it is that you're operating. And I encourage folks to do a quick shift every minute. Uh, I'm sorry, for one minute every hour. Wow. Because what that does, what quick shift is like, the best way, the best image I can give you is the tin man and his can of oil. Oh, quick shift is the oil. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because Good it reduces visual. your cortisol level mm -hmm. and it increases your DHEA level. So it's that good stuff that keeps you flexible, grounded, and coherent. Oh, super. And your VIP gift. Ah. I love the VIP gift. It's called Positive Words and Phrases. And positive words and phrases, words have power, a lot of power. And I talk about shifting your sentences, avoid using certain words, don't not know, or three of the words to avoid, uh, shoulda, woulda, coulda, avoid that. Instead of saying, oh, I'm trying. Well, guess what? If you're trying, that's equivalent to having the fingers behind your back with your fingers crossed but, and behind your back. It's about committing to something, which is a very different energy. So positive words and phrases are all different words and phrases, and you can put your own in there and write the exact opposite of them. So it's a wonderful leadership tool. And what I've learned is that folks, uh, folks who I've taught this to, that it has actually improved their email and how... Um, positive of a response they get from the folks that receive those emails. So it's really powerful. And I also um, added another gift in there uh, for, oh. a free mat, for a free masterclass. So, so super you so so that's generous of you. Thank you so much. Now, guys, if you have not paid the $97 to upgrade, you got to do it. I mean, we're giving you thousands of dollars worth of gifts today. And also this wonderful video with all of our speakers. So please go to that and check out the VIP to um, pay your $97 and get a beautiful gift from all these wonderful speakers. Thank you, Terry, so much for being my guest. Yeah. It has always been a pleasure and we got to do this more often. Talk yes, to you soon. Do. <laughs> we have another guest coming up, Denise Thomas. So you want to stay tuned, but we'll talk to you in five minutes.